I'm Diana Falzone for FoxNews.com. The hit show Downton Abbey portrays the lords and ladies of the turn of the century Britain as prim and polite, wealthy and impeccably dressed. But what makes someone a lady in today's world? Fox News anchor Martha McCallum, co-host of America's Newsroom, has some ideas, and she joins me today. Welcome. Hello. How are you? I'm great. I'm so happy you're here and that you're imparting knowledge on what it takes to be a lady in today's society because it isn't easy out there with social media and reality television to know really what proper etiquette is. So what made you decide to write this piece? Well, I loved Downton Abbey, but I'm sure I'd be working in the kitchen <laughs> if I were back then. Um, so, you know, I think we're all just sort of trying to hang on to some of these ideas and traditions. I have a daughter who's mm -hmm. 20, she's turning 20, and, you know, you want to impart to them some of these notions that I think get lost in the shuffle, especially yeah. with social media. And I also think that girls have given away a lot of their power in some ways. And I think that when you behave like a lady, which sounds like such an outdated word, mm -hmm. um, you, you do kind of garner a bit of respect in your relationships that maybe we've lost a little bit of. Oh, that's an interesting take. And, and you bring up a, a good point about how women are giving mixed messages and I think that's part of the reason why we're losing our power because we're not sure what empowers us anymore. We're supposed to be quote-unquote ladies yet we're supposed to be tough as nails in business, mm -hmm. shrewd and then doting mothers so are we just told to play too many roles? Yeah, I think we are. I, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to play all those roles. You know, in the early days of feminism, mm -hmm. um, women sort of eschewed a lot of those roles, and they wanted to be more like men in the workplace. I think those of us who came sort of after that movement mm -hmm. in many ways benefit from the work that those women did. But now we sort of can have it all again. I think you can be a lady. I think you can be attractive. I think you can be sexy. I think you can be a good mom. Um, and sort of be all of those things. But it is, it's tricky, but you have to kind of know what your core is. You have to know what you think is right and wrong, mm -hmm. and you have to understand um, that your behavior and the way that you interact with people is, is a lasting legacy, really, in your relationships and in who you are. That's true. It's not always what you say, but the feeling you leave behind. It's much more important what you do. Your mm -hmm. actions are always stronger than your, than your words. You came up with a, a great list of criteria of what it takes to become a lady. How did you think this up? You know, um, it, it was really just sort of in fun. It was inspired by a magazine, a British magazine that I saw on Twitter that had this list of, you know, how to be a lady and how to be a gentleman. And it kind of got my wheels turning a little bit. So I just I reached out to some friends and my sisters and said, you know, what do you guys think? What does it mean to be a lady? And came up with this list kind of based on some of their input and some of my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a little look. So okay. a few of the criteria on your list. Always send a thank you note. Handwritten is best, but an email is okay in a pinch. Yeah, this is basic. And mm -hmm. kids don't know how to write these days. I mean, writing, using a pen and writing, I think is harder for all of us now. Yeah. Sometimes I feel, you know, when I'm trying to actually write a, a thank you note, I have to throw it out three times because your handwriting just <laughs> gets so deteriorated by yes. all this texting and working on phones. Um, so obviously a handwritten note is always the best. It's the most mm -hmm. meaningful. We all like to receive one. And especially, you know, it's not just, you know, thank you so much. I had a great time. It's something personal mm -hmm. that you took away from the evening or from your time with that person or the gift that they gave you really makes such a great, um, impression. And it's important because being grateful for mm -hmm. friendship and being grateful for family and time you spend together is, is a significant part of life. So in a pinch, though, I think that the thoughtful email is fine. I think it's most people's go-to way of interacting these days. But you want, again, to put some thought into it, and mm -hmm. you want to convey to the person why you're grateful and why you're thankful for the time or the gift or whatever you're thanking them yeah, for. Yeah, that's definitely a really good one to have as the foundation. Yeah. And you have to teach your kids to do it. Oh, yeah, yes. Really important. I know my mom did. That was one yeah, of the things. Really every birthday, every gift, always a handwritten mm -hmm. thank you. How about... I like That's this why you one. turned out to be such a lady. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I, I'm taking more of your notes, So, oh, How about yes. reads actual books and newspapers yeah. and uh, does not source, and I love this, Ellen or Oprah too <laughs> much? Let's elaborate on that yeah. one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, one time when I was home on maternity leave, I started watching those shows during the day because yes. I was kind of, you know, had a little bit of time on my hands, and, I would, and one time I actually found myself I'll say, oh, today I read this, but actually I had seen it on, on Alan or something. Um, and I thought, wow, this is, a, this is a trap that you don't want to fall into. Mm -hmm. You want to actually um, keep up on what's going on, obviously, which we all have to do in our business. Right. But I always find that when I take the time to actually read the newspaper and, you know, go to the back pages, not, you know, in the right. morning we have time for the headlines, we're cramming for stories that we're going to do on the morning show. Um, but, 
you know, just to kind of dig in a little bit, it mm -hmm. just makes you a broader person. Yes. You have a greater understanding of what's going on. So many people are just sort of grazing the headlines these days. And I think that, you know, a lady or, you know, a woman who's educated and well-read is, is always going to serve herself well mm -hmm. and the people around her well. Right. Don't just know the vague talking points. Get to the crux of the issue. I really like this one, and I think this is important for women, especially women who are multifaceted, have careers, makes her husband and or boyfriend feel like a hero and knows it does not dis diminish her in any way. I mean, this is probably the most controversial one on the list. I think mm -hmm. a lot of women might bristle when they read this. Um, and I think the most important part is the last part. You know, I think that a lady knows that treating her husband or her boyfriend or the person in her life well mm -hmm. does not diminish her in any way. It's not a subservient thing. Yeah. Um, but you have to remember why you fell in love, why you care about that person, and you have to make them feel special all the time. And it should go both ways, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but I think it's the key to a, a lasting, good, strong relationship. You have to always remember why you fell in love with that person, and you have to treat them that way. Because we all dump on the person that we're closest to. Yep. I know. I, you know, I'm definitely guilty of it. Coming home and just, you know, yep. here, here's what's bothering me. <laughs> um, to try to be, you know, sort of on your best behavior in the mm -hmm. real world. And you got to be really careful of that. And you have to make sure that you maintain. Um, you remember what you thought was that hero or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it in terms of the man that you fell in love with. It's so. just, I, th I think, a mutual respect in a relationship. Yeah. Right. It's just you have to remind yourself. We all do. Right. It yeah. Takes work. It, it, does, take it work. does take work. It does take work. And one more, swears only when absolutely necessary and to great effect. <laughs> I read that it, you're working on this, that it's harder to, uh, to do than write. I yeah. think for anyone, especially who, who commutes or lives with any kind of stress, oh, which is all of us, that can be a little difficult. I, I don't swear very often, but when I do, I mean it. And I think that, um, you know, it, the well-placed uh, curse is occasionally quite helpful in life, as we all know. Mm -hmm. um, but it has no effect if you do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you're just sort of throwing around, you know, bombs, uh, people just sort of get used to hearing them from you right. and they don't have any meaning. But, you know, when you save it for something that really deserves it, it does tend to have the effect. Mm -hmm. I like that one. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just like a truck driver. You know, yeah. mouth like a truck driver. Not very good. Martha, thank you so much. Thank you, Diana. Fun talking with you. You too. You can check out Martha's full list of what makes someone a lady in 2015 in our opinion section at opinion.foxnews.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Diana Falzone.